Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another question the narrative video. And today's video was actually inspired by a conversation that ensued on Instagram when I posted this image. And it's just about circumnavigation, specifically circumpolar navigation. And the fact that it's thought to have been done zero times while East to West circumnavigation has been done many, 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 many times. And someone in the comments pointed out that there has in fact been circumpolar navigation done. And one of those times was by Sir Rainolf Fiennes. So I decided to look into it because I didn't wanna just say, oh no, that never happened. I wanna know, that's the whole point of questioning things. So let's see um, how this could have happened. So this right here is a photo of Sir Rainolf Fiennes, and interestingly, he's, I believe, a third cousin once removed of the actor Rafe Fiennes and his brother Joseph Fiennes. Um, not really pertinent to this topic, but I just thought I'd mention it. And I also have to say that he seems to be on pretty friendly terms with King Charles, as who was Prince Charles at the time, because he actually did a an introduction or a narration to one of his documentaries on, I believe it was on this circumpolar navigation, because he he was an explorer, so he has explored many different areas. So what I did was I tried to look up the the points that he stopped at on the way on his trek around the world. And it was it was hard for me to find it. I was able to find some very general points. So I just have a, a Gleason's map here, just because, you know, even though this does look very similar to the azimuthal equidistant map, and we do, you know, use this as our flat earth map, this is also the map that they claim that you can, you know, just bend it around and turn it into a sphere as well, or a globe for those who believe in the globe. So I can use it for, for either instance. And so what I decided to do was just to basically map out the the direction that he took so he started in greenwich england and i i'm going to just say right off the bat these are very very general locations i'm not trying to do it exactly as it so you might say something like oh greenwich england is not there in that part of england it's this part i'm just doing generalities just to basically get an idea of the way that he went or the way that he said that he went okay because we don't really know. Okay. But anyway, so he started in Greenwich, England in September of 1979. And he decided to stay down the Meridian line. And he ended up off the coast of Antarctica in January of 1980. So first of all, I want to say that taking a look at this, this really does look like what you, it's a half circle or a quote, hemisphere, right? Um, because it, it does take up half of this. So yes, if you would bend over the, the bottom of this map into a globe, it would certainly look like he went down one side of a globe, went underneath the globe, and then came back up the other side, and then boom, you have your circumpolar navigation. Well, not so fast because I'm going to show you what I've discovered in this article about his circumpolar navigation. So it just tells us here that he is actually a baronet, I believe it says. Um, not that it matters. Oh, he, in, he, he inherited the baronetcy at birth. So he does have some connections like that. I just have to point that out. And I'm not going to read all of this. I'll link this in the description if, if you would like to read it. But I'm more interested in just the circumpolar navigation. All right. So it tells us that preparation for what came to be called the Transglobe Expedition began in 1972 and occupied much of Fines and Guinea's time during the rest of the decade. So I believe that is who went with him. The trekking team, led by Fines and including fellow Britons Charles Burton and Oliver Shepard, had a support cr crew of some three dozen people, including Guinea, or Ginny, I'm not sure how to say that. 
They departed from Greenwich, England in September 1979, what I just showed you, attempting to stay as close as possible to the Greenwich Meridian as they journeyed southward over land and water until they reached the coast of Antarctica in January 1980. So exactly like what I just showed you. So they started here in September and they traveled down this way and they, by, by land and by water, so this is not flying, so by land and by water and ended up on the coast of Antarctica in, uh, I believe it was, yeah, January of 1980. So it took about four months to get this far. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. all right. They remained there until October. That's where my question starts. When Fines, Burton, and Shepard departed on snowmobiles for the South Pole, which they reached on December 15th. So they got to Antarctica in January and stayed there for nine months? Why? January would still have been considered the summertime in Antarctica. So if they had arrived when it would have been the start of winter in Antarctica, I, I would have understood that. But they got there in January and stayed there for nine months until October. It doesn't tell you why. It just says that they stayed there until October. All right. And then it says they departed on snowmobiles for the South Pole, which they reached on December 15th and setting out again after a short time at the American base there. They arrived at the Scott base on the west coast of Antarctica in mid-January 1981, having made the continental traverse in a record setting 67 days. So, and that's obviously only counting from when they left in October, not counting the nine months that I don't know what they were doing. Well, I have an idea and I'll get to that, what they were doing in those nine months. But yeah, anyway, so that was when, so then they, and I think you're probably going to know what I'm talking about. So they, they got here, they sat there for nine months and then they ended up, they, they passed through um, the South Pole, which doesn't show on this map, but, and then they got to the other side, to the Ross, um, Ross Island, I believe, which would have been approximately here and then they started traveling northward again okay so let's just read the rest of it there they were met by their support ship the benjamin bowring and the rest of their team and over the next several months they undertook a series of sea voyages northward through the pacific ocean arriving at the yukon river delta in western alaska at the end of june so they left Antarctica and five months later, they ended up um, in the Yukon River Delta in Alaska. So this here, this voyage took them six months. Okay, right here. All right. In July and August, Fines and Burton Shepard had by then left the expedition, headed east and north in an open boat through the Northwest Passage to Ellesmere Island in Nunavut, Canada, before proceeding on foot in September to the settlement of Alert on the island's north shore. After wintering there for five months, the pair set out for the North Pole in mid-February 1982 arriving there on April 11th after an arduous trek by snowmobile and sledge. So let's go back to the map here. So they got through past the, the Yukon River Delta, and then they went um, to Ellesmere Island in northern Canada, and then they kind of camped there for a little bit, and then they trekked on foot to the North Pole, which I find interesting because if you go on Google Earth, all you will see is water at the North Pole. There would be nowhere for them to get there by snowmobile and sledge, but whatever. So that's how they then got to the North Pole. Okay. The journey home was no less challenging, hampered by difficult ice conditions and stretches of open water. After the two spent more than three months on a drifting ice floe, the Benjamin Bowring was able to retrieve them and sail home to Britain. I'm sorry. 
I just, I mean, yeah, maybe it did happen that way, but I'm just imagining, you know how when they make, uh, what are they called? Reality TV, they like add in stuff for added drama, things that didn't actually happen. And that's what I'm picturing here. They floated for three months on a drifting ice flow. How did they survive? What did they eat? They had enough provisions with them for three months, just drifting around in the ice cold, probably in stormy weather. But no, they, they made it three months on a drifting ice flow. Um, it reminds me of that book that I read to my children um, about the journey to the North Pole. What was it called? Um, oh, I always forget the name of it. Well, if I think of it, I'll, I'll tell you. But anyway, I talked about it in other videos. But yeah, it, it literally just sounds like a movie to me. <laughs> Three months on a drifting ice floe, they stayed. Anyway, so then the Benjamin Bowring was able to retrieve them and sail home to Britain. The expedition arrived back in Greenwich in August, some three years after they had departed and ha after having traveled some 52,000 miles. Okay, so someone who believes in this spherical Earth might say, okay, there's proof. We you even have it mapped out here, exactly how he went. And yes, that is exactly, it, it looks like a hemisphere. It's a half a circle. He did exactly what he needed to do in order for it to qualify for a circumpolar navigation. And I would say, sure. But what about the nine months spent in Antarctica? What was he doing during that time? Well, my guess is that he was traveling during those nine months. And the reason that he needed to travel for nine months in Antarctica was because the earth is not a sphere. And, and, and someone actually just sent this to me in an email or maybe it was a comment. It actually might have been a comment. It's Antarctica. Arc means circle. What is this? Antarctica is a circle. Okay. So he was in Antarctica for nine months. I believe he was traveling. And he would have had to have been traveling by foot. I mean, I mean, I guess he could have just gone this way, but he wanted, yeah. He wanted to do this by land and by sea, so he he trekked through Antarctica for nine months, and that's when he ended up over by Ross Island, and that is how he did this, quote, circumpolar navigation. Circum should be completely taken out of it because circum is related to, well, I guess, no, it, it's circular. It's just not spherical. So yeah, it could still be called circumpolar navigation, I'm guessing. But it certainly doesn't mean that the Earth is a globe. In fact, the, the time spent down in Antarctica is actually really shady. And I think gives us more credence to the fact that the Earth is not a globe. Because he spent nine months in Antarctica. Unaccounted for. And yeah, it's probably to get over here. That's what I believe. If you're wondering what this line is here, I was just being, I, I was... I don't know what I was thinking. So when I went back on and looked, I saw that I actually was like, should have been on this, the meridian line here. So I just fixed that. So just ignore that. But anyway, so yeah, that, that is my hypothesis is that sure he went around, but it wasn't a globe. He went all the way halfway around Antarctica. And that's why it took so long because Antarctica is extremely large. That's why. So Greenwich, England, and then he went down here, stayed for nine months, but he didn't stay, I believe. I believe he was trekking for nine months. And then he reached here and, oh, sorry, he got to the North Pole, which again is not on this map. We'll say it's around here because I know that it's a little bit closer to the Ross Ice Shelf, at least if you look at maps of Antarctica that are based on the globe model. So we'll say around here, he got there in October and then two months later, he, he got there. But again, not really sure where the South Pole is in the midst of all this. Anyway, so he got here in Antarctica and then he left, took six months to actually five months because Antarctica, January, 1981 until June of 1981, the Yukon. So we're right here then. And then the islands stayed there for five months, wintered there for five months, and then went on the North shore to the North Pole and then drifted on that 
ice flow for three months because drama and then back down to Greenwich, England. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Sir Raynal Fine's circumpolar navigation. I think that there's much to question about the missing nine months. And I would like to hear what anyone else's hypothesis might be about that. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.